tell you. Just make sure you just can't. Just can't. Yeah. Hi, my name is Mpo. Uh, at this moment, we are at Cape Town Museum. Uh, we are currently trying to interpret what this queue is for. Um, this is a queue for 1994 when the people were voting for the first time in, in Wadden, South Africa. And we are so happy to be in this place. It's one of those places that remind us of the historical of the history of what of, of South Africa and also reminding of what happened um, before. So this these people who are queuing here they are so amazing. They are the reason we have this freedom that we are having today. Thank you. Um, good welcome to Clip Town Museum. What do you think this queue is for? What is happening here? Uh, for people who are voting for the first time. Yes. For the first yeah. time? In the happened in 1994. What do you think have those people, did those people bring change in what in South Africa? Do you think they've brought some change through voting? Back then. Okay. Back then. There. But then now, it's just... It's just what? It's just exactly. Like, yeah. There's no difference. I mean, the youth isn't working, people aren't working, people... When you work, you become a security guard. Kids aren't able to go to varsity, kids aren't able to go to high schools, kids don't even have study material. So I don't see the point of us having ANCs and EFFs if they can't do what they usually promise us. So do you feel like there is a lot of lack of resources in Wadden schools and yeah, a lot of access to like um, universities? There's not, well, it's not that easy to get into varsity, especially now, even at UJ, it's not that easy anymore because if you don't have enough funding you can't go to school i mean you go to high school and pass and everything but then if you don't have funding you can't go to school you can't go to varsity okay maybe tony wants can to I ask something? you guys something have you guys been in there already no yeah, yes no, 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 no. okay That's but i want you to take a look at some of those values that are shared there and i, I want to ask you a question if you think that we can overcome the whole fee situation if we stick to some of the values there because i think there's an important thing they say about education and culture which we, we overlook now in light of who can get into varsity and how we can, yeah. So I think there's something really important that we can learn maybe from this Freedom Charter that can help us maybe overcome this situation of fees and fees falling that uh, our own government was involved in. I mean, they, they were there when this Freedom Charter was drafted. But now it seems like they are not adhering to some of those principles. Then I have a question. Is it yeah. necessary to have FISMAS 4? Well, I mean, what will lectures be paid with? Well, I mean, there's a system that should be able to pay lectures and still have freer or cheaper education. It doesn't mean that if school or university is free, that lecturers don't get paid. It just means that we have to find money from somewhere else to somewhere pay. Somewhere else, like tax. Tax is a good thing. SARS. But takes then you a lot won't of be money working to paying for tax. You won't be working to afford to put grocery or afford to. You get tax even your... if you don't uh, notice. If, even yeah. if you don't pay tax, the, every meal you buy has a tax. Every every item you buy is already taxed. I understand that part, but yeah. then if the is fees must fall, if kids go to school for free, uh -huh. what will the money come from to the pay? The people who are educated, who are then now filling the employment spaces, because we have another issue of. No lack of employment and lack of skilled people. Not just lack of employment, but skilled people too. So we'll fill more gaps if we have more educated people than if we have fewer. So is education really important or the skills are really important? Because some people... The type of education, the type of skills you're acquiring, we have to match the skills and demand mm -hmm. and the skills that students are acquiring. Right now, there's a high rate of skills mismatch. Mm -hmm. Students are getting degrees, but those degrees are not... Are not are not in line with what the industry requires so it, it, it won't help us to have a million students graduating in political science yet the country needs people in risk management or something else so we ought to sort of like match the skills required and what students are, are, are studying but then what if we have the school to do mechanical engineering like having to fix a car and everything and everything but then you don't have Exactly yeah. for you to. Yeah. But now there's there's measures in which we can bridge, like people who have studied in Technicon and allow them to go into uh, university and achieve degrees from diplomas. There are means in place for that. But beyond just getting a degree, to get skills is very important. So if I come from a neighborhood 
which doesn't have engineers and doesn't have people who can I need to find a way to fill that gap regardless of whether I'm getting a degree for it or not but that's the type of thing you should even go into varsity with that what gap will I fill in the industry of South Africa what will I do what is needed to be done you know and what can I do about that I don't know if that answers your question. <laughs> one of the very sad, if you think about it, one of the very sad issues with NSFAS mm -hmm. is a lot of students don't get accepted to what they want to study. So they end up studying that they don't want to study just because they get funding for that. And one of the ways in which we need to fix that is also to fix the school system, right? Mm -hmm. So the problem is the whole system, which is what I think Tony was referring to. It's not just about you know, what happens at one university or all universities. It's about an entire education system, which is what you said, from grade naught all the way through that says to people, what are your aptitudes? What are your abilities? And also a system in which we don't say that a plumber is less important than a lawyer because they're equally important. So I think those are also issues. The other thing is one of you mentioned corruption earlier yeah, as being corruption. a problem. We all pay taxes, we all compliant, but if that money is being misspent, or stolen or not effectively spent then that money is going down the drain and I think that's why Tony is saying there is actually enough money in the system it's just the system is not efficient so we could fix it like that but I'm very keen to go and have a look at what you're talking about yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think we should make our way there and see the values that Tony is referring to all right um, this is Tony Shabangu on behalf of African Insights and we are here at the Freedom Square right in front of the the Freedom Charter's main principles, the 10 principles, and I, I'm going to just read some of the, the main headings and maybe some important points from what uh, they use to explain these main headings. So the first one is, number one, the people shall govern. Every man and woman shall have the right to vote for and to stand as a candidate for all bodies which make laws. This is an important one. I think that... Um, it, it questions a lot of how we look at government and how we look at people under government and it's very important for us to understand where we stand and how our rights to vote is a very important thing. Second one is all national groups shall have equal rights. There shall be equal status in the bodies of state, in the courts and in the schools for all na national groups and races. All apartheid laws and practices shall be set aside. It speaks for itself. I mean, everyone who is in South Africa should, shall deserve and is deserving of equal rights. And we are no longer working under an apartheid system, but one in which everyone is considered as equal. The third is the people shall share in the country's wealth. The national wealth of our country, the heritage of South Africans, shall be restored to the people. All people shall have equal rights to trade where they choose, to manufacture and to enter all trades, crafts and professions. That also speaks for itself. I mean, wealth distribution in our country is still an issue, and I think we need to look back at some of these issues, some of these um, uh, uh, principles, to maybe I don't know undo the situation. And the fourth one is the land shall be shared amongst those who work it. Um, people shall not be robbed of their cattle and forced of labor, and farm prisons shall be abolished. Restrictions of land ownership on a racial basis shall be ended. And all the land redivided amongst those who work in it to banish famine and land hunger. It speaks volumes, especially with regards to land distribution in our country, which is still prevalent and is still an issue. So uh, we need to re revisit a lot of these, actually. Um, fifth, we have all shall be equal before the law. No one shall be imprisoned, deported or restricted without a fair trial. No one shall be condemned by the order of any government official. The court shall be representative of all the people and imprisonment shall be only for serious crimes against the people and shall aim at re-education, not vengeance. Very important um, how prison shouldn't be used as a means to get back at people but to re-educate and rehabilitate and get back the humanity of people that was lost in the crime that was committed. And number six, all shall enjoy equal human rights. The law shall guarantee to all their right to speak, to organize, to meet together, to publish, to preach, to worship, and to educate their children. The privacy of the house from police, from police raids shall be protected by law, and all shall be free to travel without restriction from our countryside to town, from province to province, and from South Africa 
abroad. Um, yeah, this one I think resonates very well with the uh, all national, all people of this nation shall share in the land, and we shall also enjoy human rights equally, no discrimination of any sort. And seven, we have there shall be work and security. All who work shall be free to form trade unions, to elect their offices, and make wage agreements with their employers. The state shall recognize the right and duty of all to work and to draw full employment benefits. Men and women of all races shall receive equal pay for equal work. That's a very, very important one. People shall be treated fairly in the workspace and there shall be security in, in light of what we have as unions there to ensure that everyone gets fair treatment and gets paid accordingly to their skill and labor. And eighth, eighth, we have the doors of learning and culture shall be opened. This is vital for our current struggle with the fees must fall because some of the explanations for this principle go as following. The, the government shall discover, develop and encourage national talent for the enhancement of our cultural life. All the cultural treasures of mankind shall be open to all by free exchange of books, ideas and contacts with other, other lands. The aim of education, NB, shall be to teach the youth to love their people and their culture, to honor human brotherhood, liberty and peace. Education shall be free, compulsory, universal and equal for all children. I think that is a very important one. We do not, do not, do not want to compromise when it comes to education and we need to look back at these values to understand how we can make a way forward. Ninth, we have, there shall be houses, security, and comfort. All the people shall have the right to live where they choose, be decently housed, and to bring up their families in comfort and security. This one was made in light of how black people were housed in unfavorable situations where the environment and the land was not the best and they had to struggle and scrape through just to make a living. And now we are aiming to abolish this, aiming to have our land shared, aiming to have everyone living in habitable conditions that are not vicious to whatever they're trying to do with their lives. And then finally, there shall be peace and friendship. South Africa shall be, fully independent, shall be a fully independent state which respects the rights and sovereignty of all nations. South Africa shall strive to maintain world peace and settlement of all international disputes by negotiation, not war. Peace and friendship amongst all our people shall be secured by upholding the equal rights, opportunities and status of all. The people of the protectorates Basutu land, Bechuana land and Swaziland shall be free to decide for themselves their own future. And finally, the rights of all peoples of South Africa to, the in to independence and self-government shall be recognized and shall be the basis of close cooperation. Thank you.